I've always been interested in singers. And like my, I asked my mom once, uh, you know, how, when did I start singing? She said, as long as I remember you. Um, but I, got, I was into um, song stylists. That, that's what they call them. And they call them jazz singers now. But they're the song stylists in the 50s. This is around 1953, 4, and 5. Like uh, Sinatra and Tony Bennett, Dinah Washington, Ella, Sarah Vaughan, Al Hibbler. I was a big fan of Al Hibbler's. The Four Freshmen. I loved all that stuff. Jerry Southern. And because uh, I used to listen to WNEW in New York, I grew up in the New York metropolitan area. And then when I when I got out of grade school and entered high school, I discovered rhythm and blues, and uh, I used to listen to Alan Freed, and I, I I was just immersed in vocal groups. That was my love. Uh, all those uh, rhythm and blues vocal groups, what I, now they call duop groups. And um, I was a big fan of Frankie Lyman and the Teenagers, and. And I met them in 1956. Heard them warm up a cappella in the dressing room before a concert, and that did it for me. That was that was the that was the, the I, I I would say uh, karmically that was God hit me with that lightning bolt going here it is kid if you miss it it ain't my fault you know here it is and I it was such an incredible experience and I thought this is what I want to do so uh, I teamed up with a guy in a high school named Tommy uh, Picardo who later changed his name, uh, stage name to Tommy West. Tommy and I started a vocal group called The Criterions, and uh, we ended up recording in New York. We had a small hit. We went out on the Alan Freed show. Um, yeah, we were pretty popular, and, uh, and it, was, it was great, because we used to do this record hops with all those groups, you know, the Elegance and Little Star, and you know, Neil Sedaka, and uh, Dion and the Belmonts. We were on the same label, so we used to sing with them. and It was a wonderful time. But when, uh, and Tommy and I both went to Villanova University. We entered in 1959. And when we got there, we realized that all the college kids, because we were the first of the rock and roll generation. See how I was going to college like this? And these kids were making fun of me for being like this. But, you know, where I grew up, this was like, that's the way we all were. And I'm going like, what is with these kids? You know, like, you know, and it, I didn't realize at the time that I was the first of that generation. So these kids were into folk music and jazz. And not really hip jazz, because I was listening to John Coltrane and Art Blakey in New York, because there was this uh, great rock and roll show called Jocko's Rocket Ship Show that was on the air in New York. And when Jocko signed off at 10 o'clock, Symphony Sid came on. Symphony Sid was like, he was the jazz disc jockey. And sometimes I'd fall asleep, you know, and I'd wake up and the radio would still be on, and I'd be hearing like Art Blakey in the jazz. I said, what's this, you know? And so that's how I get into jazz. So when I, got, when I went to college... And I heard what these kids were listening to with jazz. I'm going, oh, come on, you know. But folk music, that got me. And there was a girls' school around uh, up the street from Villanova called Rosemont College. Um, very, very exclusive Catholic girls' school. And they had this place called the Tea House. We used to go in the afternoons and just basically hit on the chicks. And uh, so I was off there every day, you know, trying to hit on some chicks. And one afternoon, there was this folk trio, like the Kingston Trio, that came and played. And the kids went nuts over them. And I'm standing there, I'm looking at them, I'm going like, wow. I thought, so this is what this is what all the kids are grooving on. I thought, wow, you know, this is something else. And I thought, we could sing better than that, because the group I was in, I mean, we were good singers, man. We couldn't play. And these guys were, you know, playing guitars and banjo. What was it? I think they were called, it was the Ivy League Trio. That's who it was, because one of the girls that came from my neighborhood that went to this school was dating and later married one of the guys in the Ivy League trio. So that's how I, I think maybe I found out that they were playing, that Nancy somehow said to Tommy, you know, come on over, there's this group, you know, but that's, we saw them. And me and Tommy are going like, and we can sing as good as these guys. And it's like, nobody wants to hear what we're doing, you know, the kind of music we do, so maybe we'll get into this. What got me was that the chord changes were very similar, a lot of the chord changes in the songs that I was doing. And I went, wow. So because I had no idea, I thought this, this is something like very alien to me. And then I got sucked in. 